I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. People of God, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. Wait for the Lord, be strong, let your heart take courage, and may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Today we light the Advent candle of hope. be seated for the prayers for forgiveness. Please join me now in reading them together. We confess that sometimes we are overwhelmed by the gloomy clouds of night. Sometimes we join our voices in a chorus of envy, strife, and discord. Forgive us and cheer us by your advent, your arrival to live with us here. In this season of waiting, waiting for God to come into our world and into our lives again, we can be assured, knowing that Christ is near to us and that our sins are forgiven in Christ. As far as the east is from the west, that's how far our sins are, forgive, are from us. Be at peace, knowing you're forgiven in Christ. Alleluia. Amen.
Christ's peace is a gift, a gift that comes to us at our happiest and at our most difficult times. It's a gift that passes all understanding. It's that peace that I wish for you this morning to hold and to share with those around you. This morning, as we share the signs of peace with one another, we'll continue to be socially distant with a handshake, a peace sign, um, and we look forward to the days, hopefully soon, where we can greet each other with our hands. But for this morning, may the peace be with you. So, uh, good morning. Welcome to Central Presbyterian Church here in Summit, New Jersey. We welcome those of you who are here with us in the sanctuary. Uh, we also want to welcome those who are joining us uh, by broadcast on HTTV and those who are joining us by our uh, streaming onto Facebook. And we hope that uh, you, as well as those folks who will join us through the week uh, on Facebook, that you feel a uh, a connection with our worship service, with our worshiping community, and with the God wh whom we worship. A couple of announcements I want to bring to your attention. First of all, uh, as you can see, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, uh, this uh, first Sunday of Advent. And our thanks go out to Betsy Phillips and to her decorating committee for all their hard work in decorating uh, in the sanctuary and on the exterior of the building. Thank you very much, Betsy, for all your work. Um, yes, absolutely. Of course, we had a little assist from the boss uh, who decided to grace us with a little feeling of Christmas outside our doors uh, and uh, this morning and uh, adds to the festive atmosphere to have a little snow uh, today. Um, if you'd like to contribute to the special decorations like that are in here, um, there is a way to do that. You can make a special contribution using the insert in the bulletin uh, and make it uh, in honor of somebody or um, uh, dedicate that, uh, that special gift to somebody. Also, we're receiving gifts, uh, special gifts for those who'd like to help defray the cost of some special music that we'll be hearing throughout the Advent and Christmas seasons. And so uh, we encourage you to make those gifts, uh, use that form so that we know um, who's making the gift and to whom you'd like to make the dedication. Uh, our giving tree is still up out here, out through this doorway. Um, and there are some 20 plus uh, tags left on it, and we would really love to see that tree cleared uh, before, the, uh, before you leave here this morning. So I want to encourage you to go out there. You, on each tag, there'll be a suggested gift that you can buy for a child in our area uh, or a young person in our area. Uh, what you have to do is then you go buy that gift and bring it back here to the church next Sunday is our, is our deadline for those gifts. And, um, and then we'll take it from there and make sure it gets connected to the person uh, for whom it's intended. So uh, we encourage you again to stop by 
our giving tree right outside this door and let's uh, clear all the tags off of there before the end of today. Um, I, I do want to let you know that we are uh, beginning, a, I'm beginning a sermon series today that's looking at some of the stories behind some of our Christmas carols and the writers of those, uh, of those carols, the lyrics. Um, and so uh, to tie to that, uh, beginning next Sunday for two weeks, so December 5th and December 12th, uh, Dr. Charity Wicks and I will be uh, co-teaching a class on Christmas carols primarily. And we invite you to join us for that class. It will be held those two Sundays at 11 o'clock. For those who'd like to gather in person, we will be uh, over in the North Classroom. For those of you who would like to join us by Zoom, you can do that. The Zoom link will be in the Friday email this week. And all you have to do is click on that on Sunday morning and um, we'll let you in. You'll be in a waiting room for a short time. We'll let you in uh, to the class and you can join us virtually uh, next Sunday. Uh, the 5th and again on the 12th. The two classes stand alone, so it's not like you have to be at the first one to get anything out of the second one or vice versa. Hopefully you'll join us. Each class will last about an hour. And I do understand that we're going to have some uh, time for uh, uh, fellowship after the service outside. Uh, I encourage you to get your coat. Come on out. The coffee's hot. Uh, and it is New Jersey and it is the end of November, and so it is no shock or surprise that it's cold. Uh, but, um, you know, um, last I checked, we don't hibernate for these months, and so we invite you to come out and share some time together outside a warm cup of coffee and on this cold morning, a time of warm fellowship. You know, I do want to take an opportunity to welcome Jillian Hassert back. We'll be hearing from her in just a minute. She and Adam are singing. Yeah. Great to have you back. Uh, and I understand Jillian's been out uh, touring with, uh, uh, with Oklahoma, the, the, the musical uh, Oklahoma. And um, I, I tried this at the first service. It didn't work. But, um, you know, I, I, keep, I keep wondering about, like, uh, a postlude of, oh, what a beautiful morning or something like that uh, might be kind of nice to hear. Uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll stay with Christmas, I guess, uh, for the hell that. But it's, uh, Jillian, it's great to have you back, back home. That uh, completes our announcements uh, for this morning.
thanks so much. Um, as I, I've been saying, um, this first Sunday of Advent marks uh, actually in the church's year, uh, the beginning of a new year. Um, and um, what we'll be doing in the coming year is focusing a lot of our attention around the Gospel of Luke. Um, and we'll begin that this morning. Um, and so we're, we've left the Gospel of Mark, and now uh, our Gospel focus will be on Luke. We're reading this morning a scripture passage from near the end of the Gospel, uh, Luke chapter 21, beginning to read at the 25th verse. Listen and hear God's word. Jesus said, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up, and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Earth and heaven will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. May God bless to our understanding this reading of God's holy word and to God's name be glory and praise. Amen. As I mentioned, uh, these next several weeks, I want to talk with you about uh, some of the stories behind some of our Christmas carols. And today I want to talk with you about one of our lyricists, a man by the name of John Mason Neal. Uh, John Mason Neal lived a life that was not an easy one. His entire lifetime, he suffered from poor health. And his health um, ended up making his life a very short one. He died at the young age of 48. And perhaps he would have lived longer if he had taken better care of himself but John Mason Neal spent most of his life caring for the poor. He spent most of his life uh, working in a nursing home, caring for poor men who could not find another place to live. He also uh, helped to start an organization called the Sisters of St. Margaret. It's an Anglican order that to this day works with poor women and children in England and in Haiti, and in the United States. In fact, the Sisters of St. Margaret, now known the Society of St. Margaret, they work in conjunction with Trinity Wall Street in Manhattan. Now, it might seem odd to us, but back in the mid-19th century when John Mason Neal was alive, the organization, the Sisters of St. Margaret, was quite controversial. First of all, it was a Protestant religious order. And to some people back then, that just seemed far too Catholic. It also was a place where women found important work to do outside the home. And back in the mid-19th century in England, that was a big deal. And so it was a controversial organization, and people suspected it of all sorts of terrible things, none of which were true. But it was so controversial that 
at one point in his life, a mob actually attacked John Mason Neal and physically injured him. And yet, John Mason Neal would not give up on doing the work that he felt that he was called to do as a priest in the Church of England, that is, to care for the poor, for the disadvantaged. And he found an escape from all of that stress and all of that distress in poetry. John Mason Neal wrote a lot of poems that ended up becoming lyrics for a lot of hymns. John Mason Neal wrote the lyrics, for instance, to the song, Good King Wenceslas. He also loved to read ancient and medieval Latin poetry, which he then would translate into English. And a lot of those translations became the lyrics for a lot of other hymns that we sing to this day. There are at least 12 hymns in our hymnal, the lyrics of which come from translated poetry from John Mason Neal. He translated the Latin poetry that ended up in the lyrics of all glory, laud, and honor, or Christ is made the sure foundation. He also translated the words to two hymns that we're singing today. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. He's not given full credit for that in our hymnal, uh, but he is largely responsible for the lyrics. And the hymn, Good Christian Friends Rejoice. And you know, it's that last Christmas song that makes you take notice of John Mason Neal. I mean, considering how hard his life had been, and considering all the suffering that he saw in his life's work, among other people, all the ways that the world was kind of broken, considering all of that, you wonder what resonance he found in this medieval Latin poem that encourages us to rejoice with heart and soul and voice. It's kind of a remarkable thing to think that of all the poems he could have picked to translate for Christmas, he chose this poem. And yet, maybe it's really not all that unusual. Madeline Lengel, the novelist, she once wrote in one of her books that maybe it's only those who know darkness who can truly ever appreciate the light. In the scripture passage that I read to you this morning, Jesus was talking with his followers about what they could expect in life. And he was warning them that they were going to face some tough times in life. There was really nothing about that that should be unusual for them. But they were going to face tough times in life like everybody else. There will be distress among nations, Jesus warned. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming. And as Jesus lays out expectations in life, there's a good bit of darkness in it. But Jesus went on to tell his followers that precisely when they found themselves in the midst of the darkness, that was when they would see the Son of Man coming. That is, that is when they would see Jesus himself in the midst of the darkness. When these things begin to take place, Jesus said. That is, when the darkness seems to get so 
deep all around us. And when it seems like all hope is gone, and when it feels like we just cannot simply go on, we simply cannot take anything more than we've already taken, precisely then stand up, Jesus told his followers, and raise your heads because your redemption, that is your freedom, your liberation, your release from all of this, it's near. It's drawing near. So don't give up. And don't lose hope. Because in the darkness, there is a light that shines. For the truth is, Christ is born today. He is in the manger now. This isn't something that happened just 2,000 years ago. This isn't just ancient history. No. Christ is born right now. Today. Christ is here. Dr. William Willimon is a retired Methodist bishop, and he uh, writes about the aftermath of a hurricane that struck near his home. The power was out for day after day, and rumors started to circulate among the, pop, among the residents that um, there had been looting and robbery, even home invasions. Well, one night, as they sat in their powerless home, there was a knock on the front door. And Dr. Willeman says that they were really afraid to open the door because they didn't know what was out there in the darkness. As it turned out, there was no reason for them to be afraid because there was a friend knocking at their door, and the friend was bringing them a bag of ice they had somehow managed to find to help them get through the difficult days. But Dr. Willeman writes, in reflecting on this experience, he writes, as we peer into the darkness in fear, it makes all the difference in the world whose face we see in the dark. Is it friend or is it foe? And this Advent, I wonder whose face it is that you see in the dark. Because there's no doubt about it that this Advent there's plenty of distress and confusion all around us. And people are afraid and there is a foreboding about what might come. But in the midst of that, whose face do you see? And can you find in any of it the face of Christ? For make no mistake about this, this all is not about some ancient story. No. Christ was born for this, for this darkness that we face in this present moment, in this day, Christ was born for this. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Please be seated. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the great good news that Christ is born today. And that Christ was born for this. This day. The trials that we face in our lives now. And we pray that you would help us when things get dark and when it seems like all hope is lost. We pray that you would help us to see in those moments the face of Christ, a friend, not a foe, coming to help us to walk through with courage, with faith, with love. We do pray for all of those who struggle today, who have come out of a Thanksgiving holiday and wondered what they had to celebrate. And as we press into a season of Advent, of waiting, of watching with hope and with joy and with love, we pray that you would give us the grace to share that hope and that joy and that love with those who struggle to find any reason for any of that. Be with those who are broken. Be with those for whom life is dark. And help us to find ways to be near as well. Holy God, we thank you that you come to us, even here, even now, today. And we pray that you would be near us always as we go from this place to serve you. Help us to share the light of your love wherever we find ourselves and the good news of hope, always hope, through Christ in whose name we pray as together we pray the prayer that we were taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This past week, we, many of us, cooked turkeys and celebrated a time of Thanksgiving with our families. And here in the church, we were so overjoyed to see the overwhelming generosity of so many of you. We had more bags of Thanksgiving food than we have ever collected. So many that ship had to reach out to loaves and fishes to take all of the bounty, um, to continue to serve people in the community. As I walked in this morning, I saw bags and bags of clothes collected. And on Friday, a group went out for a bridges run, taking sandwiches and lunches from all of you. Thank you. Thank you for your energy. Thank you for your generosity and kindness. Thank you for your enthusiasm, your ideas, and your leadership. Thank you all for saying yes to God in so many ways that together we serve. In the sermon today, we heard all about those deep places, those places sometimes of hurt and pain. 
that can lead to such places of joy and delight and generosity. And so I invite you all to continue to join with this beautiful work of serving the people around us, of serving our community. We invite you to, of course, give on the online platform. You can always send a check to them in the mail. And we have plates at each of the entrances where our ushers can help you to make a contribution. And thank you. Thank you for always joining with us and God's love and God's care of this community. This service of worship has ended and we go from this place to serve God in all that we say, in all that we do, in all who we are. None of us knows what we will face this week. For some there will be great joy and triumph and for others there will be sadness and defeat but whatever it is that we face this week, we do not face it alone. But we face it all in the strength and the power of the Almighty God who is always here and always near. May the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you would overflow with hope. God bless you. <laughs>